started to sound alike, somehow losing their flavor in a melting pot of spiritual soup. The first ever Millennium World Peace Summit of religious and spiritual leaders took place at the United Nations in August. And some believe it marked the first major step toward a movement to usher in a global spiritual body that may one day speak for all religions. Robert McGinnis with the Family Research Council says it appears the hidden agenda is to unite people under one religious organization so they will peacefully accept UN goals such as population control, abortion rights, and one world government. Instead of all these different gods, maybe there's one God who manifests himself and revealed himself in different ways to different people. You know, what about that, huh? CNN founder and billionaire Ted Turner was the honorary chair of the World Religion Summit. Turner, known for his critical views on biblical Christianity, promoted the New Age concept that there are many ways to heaven. The thing that disturbed me is that uh, my religious Christian sect uh, was very intolerant, not intolerant of religious freedom for other people, but uh, we thought we were the, they thought that we were the only ones going to heaven. Supporters of a global religious voice have come down hard on evangelical Christians who refuse to adopt their New Age agenda. Maharishi Mahesh Yogi uh, basically evangelized the West, uh, came over here, went on veritable tours and lectured with the Beach Boys, was promoted by uh, the Beatles, and led masses of young people into transcendental meditation. A lot of these people that were practicing it began to have horrifying experiences, demonic attacks, things of that nature, and uh, this is documented. And it was able to slither into the to the schools, the public schools to a degree. And then books came out on how this is a very religious practice. And, and Maharishi Mesh Yogi, his own admissions from his own books were that these mantras they were uttering as they were meditating were the names of Hindu gods. Well, the Bible says that these, the gods of these nations are demons again. So, uh, people were invoking spirits and under the banner of what was, you know, billed to be something scientific. And Maharishi Mahesh Yogi says, and through transcendental meditation, you're not just calling out on one spirit, you're calling out to the head of all these different spirits. You can get all the power from them at once, uh, which we would understand as the prince of demons or Satan, you know. Uh, with tantric yoga, you're talking about yoga, which is sexually perverted and mixes spirituality, kind of like Aleister Crowley's sex magic. He practiced uh, tantric yoga. And what you try to do is practice a form of yoga where you're loosing the serpent force, the kundalini force within your body and in your consciousness. And it, it, it's all quite crazy when you think about it. Even Reiki, you know, these doctors practices Reiki, and it's an occult form of laying on of the hands. And different Reiki literature talks about spiritual forces, transference of spirits, things of that nature, through the practice of Reiki. So what in the world is Rick Warren, who's supposed to be a shepherd of his church, doing but opening the church up to all kinds of occult forces? And I've seen videotape of Rick Warren talking with these doctors about meditation. It's very simple. I mean, there's a meditation exercise from Harvard. Mm -hmm. It's not religious at all. It's yeah. called the relaxation response. Yeah, Take a big breath. Yeah. Right? Blow it out. Yeah. Every time you breathe out, say the word one. Yeah. Do it for 10 minutes. You got all these thoughts coming in your head. Imagine a big broom. So we'll leave them away. Yeah. And if you can just take some time mm -hmm. and pray or meditate, mm -hmm. it decreases stress. Your brain is better. Make better decisions. The emergent view of you know mysticism and experience and trying to experience God through mysticism is 
so tragic because what happens is uh, in mysticism, and this is, I mean, almost every ancient culture that has written somewhat extensively, you read in their writings about demonization. Uh, uh, anthropologists talk about the great majority of cultures recognize that demons are real. They're, they're real entities. And the Bible tells us to guard against them. But you have men like Dan Kimball, whose book I mentioned uh, Rick Warren had endorsed. He said the old paradigm is that if you have right teaching, then you will be able to experience God. But he says the new paradigm is that if you experience God, then you can have right teaching. And the problem with that is, before I was a Christian, I opened occult doors. Uh, before I was 18 and converted to Jesus Christ and found uh, Him as my Lord and Savior, uh, I was opening myself up to New Age philosophy and what have you, and I opened myself up to dark things. And if I would have followed Kimball's advice, I would think, wow, you know what? Now I need to follow the teachings these things are encouraging me in, you know? And I'd be lost. But thankfully, the Bible lets us know that we're to test experiences. Paul says, prove all things and hold fast or hold tight to that which is good in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. The Apostle John said, don't believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether or not they are of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ is, has come in the flesh, he says, is the spirit of Antichrist. So it's very important that Christians realize there's mass deception going on out there. And the emerging leaders, the emerging church leaders, are actually opening their followers up to these demonic hosts, whether knowingly or unknowingly. You also have emergent leaders like Rob Bell leading their church, not only to guys like Ken Wilber, who are teaching occultism and demonization and satanic views. Uh, you have Rob Bell also leading youth, leading many, many Christians into mystical practices, into different forms of mysticism and, and different forms of contemplative prayer, or different forms of Eastern meditation. For instance, he leads, you know, his his audience and says, you know, put one hand on your belly, take a deep breath and breathe slowly. And then he simulates it and he's leading them, you know, into Eastern mysticism. And then he tells them that the breath that's coming in and out is actually God. Take one hand, place it upon your belly. Take one hand, place it upon your chest. Let's breathe for a moment, shall we? Nice, big, deep breaths. Central to the Christian tradition for thousands of years have been disciplines of meditation, reflection, silence, and breathing. Now from way back when, our ancestors understood that there's something divine about our breath. Take a moment as you breathe deeply to invite the God who made the universe into your breath. I wonder sometimes when we feel as though God is far, God is thinking, I gave you breathing, I can't get closer. Is God as close as breathing? Many of the emerging leaders, they'll have their followers, they'll encourage them to say words over and over and over again in their prayer life, contradicting what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount. When Jesus said not to be like the pagans who say the same things over and over again, thinking that they'll be heard of God, not to be repetitious, Jesus said, in your prayer life. And so it's incredibly heartbreaking that you have them taking a word or two words. They'll say, oh, well, you know, a lot of times it's the Bible, you know, it's a couple words from the Bible, but it's disassociated from its context. Meditating on the Bible is, what is God saying to me? What's your will, Father? How do I please you and glorify you? And you begin to pray and talk to him about his word. Real biblical meditation will give me strength to obey you and, and obey your word. And it's a joyous encounter with God when you truly seek the Lord through his word. But when you take a word or two, you start repeating it because you feel like you're going to get some kind of spiritual effect. You're doing exactly what Jesus said not to do.